Let's bring in the Victorian Shadow Minister for Health, Georgie Crozier, now in Melbourne. Georgie, let's start there. Do you agree with Professor Matthews that there's not enough transparency in relation to this COVID data? Oh, absolutely, Peter. Professor Matthews is absolutely spot on. The data is absolutely critical for all these decisions that are being made by government and Victorians don't know what the data is. So we've got no clue why these decisions are being made. We're just being told that getting um, the evidence is based on the data, yet there is no transparency about this. And Professor Matthews is, is so right. The, the confidence of the community is waning each and every day. And it's because of the actions like this where we just don't know what's going on and this lack of data that's being provided to us. And of course, you know, he says he's listening to his experts, but they're the same experts that he's had all the way along, the same experts that have failed Victorians, I have to say, on multiple occasions. And I don't understand why he's not prepared to put more of the information out there so that all of these other epidemiologists and, you know, university health experts that are in this this story today that have weighed in saying we've got to have greater transparency, how they then can't debate, are we on the right path? Are we doing things fast enough? Have, have we protected the most vulnerable? I don't know why he'd be scared of that debate. Well, if he's got nothing to hide, Peter, then put it out there. Other states and territories are putting the data out. New South Wales is. So there's just so much data that needs to be coming out so that the community and understand what's going on. And those very real experts that uh, the Premier keeps saying he's getting his information on, let the other epidemiologists and experts see what the data says as well. So there is just so much that needs to be done. And there's been so much um, hidden and secrecy around this whole planning and the whole management of uh, the pandemic crisis here in Victoria. And that's partly why we're in this dreadful, dreadful mess that we are. Right, talk to me about contact tracing. We know in Victoria uh, about 3,500 of the cases are unknown transmission. They're out in the community. We don't know where the, the source case is. Uh, we know that the contact tracing teams are under pressure. I still understand why the Premier knocked back the help of the military for so long. Now he can't have enough. Now he's asking the Prime Minister, mm. as we saw again today, for more military. How have we got this so wrong compared to other states. Big states like New South Wales are much better at the tracing. What's, what's happened here, Georgie? Well, in New South Wales, they followed up every case every day. They had the support of the ADF since April when they knew they had a problem. And it just beggars belief why the, the Andrews government had refused that support from the ADF when we were calling on it weeks and weeks ago. And what we've found is the public... Um, health team here in Victoria is, has been the worst resource of anywhere in the country. So they couldn't even do the job. And this is just scandalous what has gone on. We've got these catastrophic failings because of the lack of the contact tracing that should have been done and as a result this widespread community transmission. Let me ask you, an interesting point you made there about this public health team. I saw a statistic a couple of weeks ago that there were more people, political <laughs> staffers, in the Premier's office than they were in this public health team uh, at the start of the pandemic. Of course, Daniel Andrews is the Premier, but he was also the health minister for some time. So he's had a long history in this area. There were some announcements going into the weekend about a reorganisation again of the internal structures in the Victorian government, particularly in relation to health. What can you tell us? Well, that's right. The Deputy Chief Health Officer, the quite controversial um, Dr Van Diemen, was moved on. She's, you know, fourth or fifth down the food chain in, in the whole thing. But she was uh, apparently uh, working on the logistics of the contact tracing team. Now, she's been moved on and they've got more expertise in. But this is too little, too late. We're, it's August, for goodness sake. We're six months into this pandemic. We had the very first case in January. Uh, the minister told us in February we were prepared. We clearly haven't been. And this, this team in the department has been absolutely uh, under-resourced. And I, I've got to say, you've got to question what actually went on and also why the Premier hasn't questioned his own minister and those other ministers sitting around that uh, cabinet of eight around making these very significant decisions on behalf of all Victorians and why he didn't question, are we doing this right and have we got it right? Well, of course, you have no parliament sitting here to query any of this. The parliament now has been uh, cancelled. It won't be sitting this week. It was meant to. The inquiry into the hotel quarantine debacle, it returns uh, to sittings on Thursday. We know from the first round of, of witnesses it will not include the Premier. 
or any of the ministers involved in the decision about hotel quarantining. It doesn't have the power to, to, to call witnesses. It doesn't have the power to subpoena documents. You've got to wonder, it's supposed to report in September when Victoria will still be in this stage for lockdown. I mean, what sort of inquiry is this? Well, Peter, Victorians are in the most terrible situation and they just want to get answers and they deserve answers. You know, they, they, we're in this lockdown, this curfew, these horrendous um, restrictions that are in place and the shutdown of business that are going to destroy people's lives and livelihoods without the dreadful loss of life that's been going on. And we've got this inquiry uh, that where there's no guarantee uh, where we don't think the Premier and those responsible ministers are going to front up. If they're really serious about giving the confidence back to the community, uh, the Victorians, they deserve those the Premier and those ministers to front up to that inquiry. Nothing less, nothing less. They should all be available and be um, giving full answers so that Victorians absolutely know what they had and what they did about the hotel, hotel quarantine scandal because that's where this whole situation has arisen from, um, the breaches of the hotel security and Victoria is in this just devastating state at the moment and it is really heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Aged care and mental health as well. Georgie Crozier, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Peter.